Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the patch 12.5b updated tier list. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content like this. Now let's get started. First off we'll be starting off with the top laners. We'll start off by saying that the support top laners are officially gone from our tier list for now. They aren't popular enough to make the list. That said, supports always find a way to weasel their way back into the solo lane, so I'm sure that we'll see them back before too long. Chen moves up to the OP tier. His performance across the board is just way too strong to not make it there. With his super strong trading being good against both tankier foes and higher damage bruisers, he just doesn't really know what a bad matchup is. He can even itemize versus magic damage threats with wit's end, so not even mages are good picks against him. Usually you have to make the choice between splitting and team fighting with most champions, but his ultimate allows you to do both. This gives you a huge edge in macro in the later stages of the game. Somehow, despite never really showing up in the balance changes, Singe seems to always be a pick that is always steadily rising on the performance charts. In fact, it's not just top lane. While rare to see, Singe is one of the highest performing mid lane champions in the game, but we'll get to that when we talk about that role in a bit. While proxying is a pretty hard strat for people to deal with, that's not his only use as a top laner. A lot of people don't realize just how much damage Singe does in trades. That alongside with the fact that you will be running Ignite can lead to some very surprising solo kills, even as early as level 2. In the later stages of the game, Singe is a true AP bruiser, combining high damage over time with being very difficult to bring down. This makes him an insanely effective backline disruptor. Just be sure that you're constantly dipping in and out of fights around your flanks cooldown. You don't want to just face tank a late game ADC as they will be able to shred you. It's better to bait them into chasing you around. Now that we differentiated our high elo tier list from the standard one, Auction moves down to the A tier. Only really good players have enough wave management and micro skills to actually abuse how OP this champion is. At a more average level of skill, he's still decent, but is a little bit harder to pull off, especially in the top lane where it's very easy to overextend and die to ganks. It's also harder for teams to work with non-tanky top laners in this elo, since a lot of games drag out to be a little bit longer, to the point where team comps matter more. In a good matchup, where she gets a free lane, Irelia can definitely be a menace. But the thing is, she's too reliant on getting one of those good matchups to do well. Too many champions just roll her in lane, and without a lead, she's just completely useless. She won't win a side lane, and just gets absolutely melted in fights. Another tier list shift that we're making due to us differentiating between a high elo tier list and an average one is Gangplank and Jace dropping way down. Gangplank lands in the B tier and Jace falls all the way down to the C tier. Though it is debatable that Gangplank should be in the D tiers, that way you could be under the C <laughs> tier. Okay. <clears throat> Gangplank at least has a decent time laning against most opponents. You won't see a plat and under player pulling off very great combos most of the time, but just playing around barrels as a zoning tool means that you can bully a lot of melee champions. Where he starts to flop in lower elos is team fighting. If you can't pull off barrel chains consistently, you won't be doing much. Jace lends a tear under that because you rarely see people even using his bullying potential in lane the right way in lower elos. And those that do, don't have the wave management to avoid ganks, so they throw whatever lead that they build up pretty quickly. If you think that you don't fall into that category and you absolutely win lane with Jace every single time, then you should have no problem climbing up to at least master tier with him. He is one of the best top lane solo carries if you can play him at his skill cap after all. Now for the jungle, here's our tier list. Despite showing up in our other meta videos, we hadn't added Volley to our actual tier list yet. Our bad on that one and thank you guys so much for letting us know. His strong dueling and decent ganks make him a pretty formidable pick and one that can snowball surprisingly hard. One of the really strong selling points for me is how easily he can pull off tower dives post 6. Usually tower diving with the lead is one easy way to throw games, but since Volley straight up EMPs towers, you can't really botch a dive with him. The most common one to go for early is in the bot lane, since you can always convert a double kill there into an easy dragon kill. Sejuani has a sudden spike in how well she's been performing lately, so she's been bumped up to the S tier. That being said, she's not exactly a solo carry all by herself. Even when you're super ahead, you want to fight with your team as much as possible. Early on, your biggest goal with her is just to play around melee laners, since they can help you stack up your stun quickly. Another champion that somehow avoided being on our tier list that should have been there ages ago is Skarner. We featured him many times in our champion's domain and sleeper OP lists, because despite being an insanely high performer in any meta, he's a very rare pick. Maybe it's a somewhat one-dimensional playstyle seeming boring to most people, or maybe it's just that people don't really know how broken he is. Either way, if you want to climb, he's a pick that you should be taking advantage of. And unlike Sejuani, there are actual viable damage focused builds on him. They may not be quite as consistent as tank builds, but I really like going Conqueror with Trinity Force or Divine Sunderer if my team has other frontliners. The last addition to our S tier is Nocturne. While their kits are nothing alike, he's like Skarner in the sense that he basically gets an instant win button the second that you hit level 6, and he's quite literally a nightmare to deal with. 
Each ultimate is basically a guaranteed kill, as long as you're pathing to the right lanes, you can very easily take over the game once you get it. Later on into the game, he provides immense pressure. You can catch opponents farming in a side lane or rotating by themselves through the jungle with their ultimate. But unlike most assassins, he's not limited to just making picks like this. Since you generally build him more like a bruiser, Nock is fine diving into the fight to reach his target as well. While he's technically an off-meta champion in the jungle, Mordekaiser gets added to the tier list because he's just performing too well, too consistently to ignore. He isn't quite OP enough to be considered S tier, since counters like QSS and teams with a lot of peel are able to kite him. But still, he provides a huge presence in teamfights and should always be able to take one threat out of a fight with his ultimate, so he lands in the A tier. Shin drops down to the B tier. Honestly, it was tough not to put him in the C tier this time around. He just really isn't fulfilling his role of stopping early and snowballing a lead hard like you expect from him. Lilia also gets demoted to the B tier, due to her only really being good as a counterpick. The only time that she's worth picking is when the enemy team is really beefy and your team needs some magic damage to cut through their tanks. A high HP low damage enemy team means that Lilia becomes an unkillable drain tank, but when dealing with higher damage opponents, she usually just gets melted in teamfights before she can deal much damage at all. At the very start of the 12.5 patch, Yi was one of the most broken champions in the game, able to one-shot people with his Q alone once he got Ginsu's Rage Blade. Of course, Riot was quick to hotfix that, hitting him with a huge nerf that made him awful. Even the 12.5b patch buffs didn't really bring him back up to being a great pick. If you make it to the late game with him, he's still the same hyper carry as he always was. But at that point, you're just coin flipping on your opponents being bad enough to let you do that. Lee Sin drops all the way down to the C tier. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you're playing Lee Sin in lower elos and you actually want to climb, you probably need to stop. You need pretty much impeccable mechanics to carry games with him, and even then, he's just a counterable pick that's not very reliable. Even in higher elos, he's overall not a great pick right now, so just hang him up for now. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Vigar gets promoted to the OP tier. While he may be more of a scaling pick, and scaling picks tend to not be that OP in the current meta, Vigar is a little bit different. He is just way too consistently able to come online, and once he gets that ball rolling, he's very difficult to shut down. In my opinion, his biggest strength isn't even his ridiculous burst, it's his baby cage. That ability makes receiving ganks super free, since most opponents will already be overextending in an attempt to pressure you since you're supposed to be a weak laner. The cage is also super OP in fights around Baron and Dragon, since it can block off entire jungle ramps. We just recently demoted Uxian from the OP tier down to the S tier, but he's right back at the top. Oftentimes, it's not about champion receiving direct buffs or nerfs that change anything. Sometimes, it's just slight meta shifts that cause enough of a change in their performance that warrants them moving on the tier list. Probably the most surprising tier list placement in this whole video is Singe promotion to the OP tier for the mid lane. While Singe mid is a relatively rare sight, when it does get played, it has a very high performance rate. Even with this relatively small sample size, you can't really deny something that nearly has a 57% win rate. The core of Singe's success comes from his playstyle. While top lane Singe will often be found proxying, the mid lane towers are too close together for that to be viable. Instead, mid lane Singe runs Predator and uses his ability to melt minion waves to make big roaming plays on the map. It's a good way to ensure that your jungler always has good early game control, since you can constantly help them out, which usually leads to winning the game for your side lanes as well. While still a pretty solid pick, Vex just doesn't hit like she used to. She's safe, she's consistent, but you won't be losing very many lanes with her, if any at all. But you still won't completely be rolling the opponents over and 1v9 fights with her either, so she lands in the A tier. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Jade gets dropped down to the S tier. He's a very good champion with a strong laning phase and pretty good carrying power in teamfights. But he just doesn't have the 1v9 potential that you see with the other champions in the OP tier, so I had to take him down a notch. Samira is definitely objectively a very strong ADC, but we think that she's only an S tier pick in the very high elos. She's still a viable pick in the lower ranks, but she is a very support reliant pick, and since supports in these lower ranks tend to be a little bit uh, inconsistent at best, we think that she belongs in the A tier for now. Zeri gets dropped down all the way to the B tier. This is another change based on us splitting our high elo tier list off from this one. The thing is, when you have the mechanics for her, Zeri is probably the absolute best carry in the game, and can literally 1v5 team fights. But outside of the very top of the ladder, players don't simply have the mechanics quite at that level. To finish things off, we have our supports. Senna gets promoted up to the OP tier. She is hands down the absolute best support if you want to actually be able to carry in your games. The only downside to Senna is that her early game is relatively weak, but given that the general bot lane meta is weak early game champions, you're very rarely punished for that. Always getting a free lane means always getting to scale and be a huge late game threat. Nico is sort of an on again, off again, off meta pick as a support, and right now, she's definitely on the upswing. She's consistently performing pretty well in all meta matchups. Like with most mage supports, her main trait is being super lane dominant. 
She provides good poke and also has super good all-in potential post 6 if you can land an empowered root into an alt combo. Zeroth on the other hand gets a demotion, barely landing in the beads here. There isn't a whole lot to talk about here. He just has to provide as much of a well-rounded kit as the other main supports are actually good. Finishing off our list, we have Karma being demoted to the C tier. In lane, Karma actually provides a pretty hefty amount of pressure. In fact, she's probably the best enchanter in terms of laning strength, but that's the end of her list of useful things that she provides. She falls off very quickly, with her only real use in teamfights being her Mantra E. And most Karmas you see just spam their Mantra Q anyways, like the extra damage really means anything. Either way, even when they do play her the right way, she just isn't nearly as impactful as the other enchanters in teamfights. I just can't really think of a single scenario where picking her would be the best choice. And that wraps things up for our updated patch 12.5b tier list. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list down in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. Because it's still the beginning of the season, we're bound to have some great content coming up for you guys. Best of luck on the Summoner's Rift, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.